last year sort of after DEFCON saying, I'm doing something really big. Um, if you want to get involved with it, send me a tweet of um, who you are, where you live, and why I can trust you. So, you know, I, I did that. Um, and then to my surprise, I got selected to, you know, get involved in this event and uh, I was like really excited because you know I mean I'm pushing 40 years of age so clearly anything that's to do with like a skateboard legend and you know Tony Hawk I'm like oh yes <laughs> fantastic um, uh, which is probably a little bit sad but my wife tolerates it because um, she's seen his house on MTV Cribs and thinks it's the uh, coolest thing she's ever seen so I'm telling all of my colleagues at work who are who are also um, you know in security and whatnot far later than I am um, I said oh, I'm doing this thing with Tony Hawk on Twitter and he's going to send me a box to my house and I'm going to hide it somewhere. The guy that, um, so, so one of my colleagues, uh, a gentleman called Pat Judor, who's sitting down here, he said, okay, Chris, so um, you've given your address uh, to somebody on Twitter who claims to be Tony Hawk and um, he's going to send you uh, a box um, which you're going to hide in a city that got rid of dustbins uh, because of the IRA. Um, and, um, and there are no problems there at all, Chris, were his exact words. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and then, um, you know, a couple of days ago, uh, over dinner, he was saying, oh, yeah, that would be a really cool thing to do. Pretend to be somebody else on Twitter. Get them engaged with what you're doing. Let's say you have a Twitter ID called the real Lady Gaga and stuff, and say, hey, I'm going to hide something around the world. Just need to send you a parcel. Um, you know, what's in it for you? Extra Farmville points, I think, was what he suggested. Um, so maybe it's a Facebook hunt or something. And uh, then you could really launch something quite quite incredible just by getting other people who are quite innocent to do stuff for you. So I was like, oh, that's a really good idea. I'll mention that. Um, <laughs> but don't do it because that would be illegal. So anyway, Tony sent me this box um, undeterred by all of this. Is it the real Tony Hawk? I'm like, yeah, of course it is. It's got the blue tick. How could it not be? Um, if you're not familiar with two uh, Twitter and you know if you're a celebrity or something you get like a little blue uh, little blue tick there's uh, obviously a delay because I haven't got mine yet um, <laughs> so I had to I had to hide the uh, I had to hide the box and then come out with a clue so this was my clue guarded by a fearsome troll northwest from a house where you might have to pay money to pass and a skateboard well I live sort of northwest of a toll house. That's the money. Uh, that's the house where you might have to pay money to pass. Uh, northwest of that is a skate park, and if you keep going northwest, you'll head uh, to uh, two bridges that look a, a little bit like this. So um, I was, uh, I, I hid the package under the the bridge, and at this point, I was a little bit concerned. So was my wife, um, because. Clearly, uh, the, this bridge and the other bridge are two of the main arteries uh, around our village, so uh, they're very sensitive, um, and I didn't want to get spotted. So I figured I'd do this uh, under the cover of broad daylight, um, and nobody challenged me at all, uh, which was pretty interesting. And I sent the clue out. Um, now, this guy here, uh, at Stephen Gill, who's now one of my heroes, um, he was so amped about this whole Tony Hawk thing that he drove up from a different city in the UK and camped out in Basingstoke, which is the culture capital of Europe, by the way. Um, if you've not been there, you should. Um, so he camped out there all day just waiting for Tony, who's based in San Diego, to send out a tweet. So you can imagine that Tony's a skateboarder, and skateboarders probably don't get up that early, so he sent the, the tweet out, you know, uh, a little bit later. Um, and uh, he went on a mad hunt and kept tweeting, has anybody found it yet? Has anybody found him? And I'm thinking, I don't know, I'm at work, <laughs> miles away. Um, and then eventually I got this from him, uh, camo netting, you're a, a bad man. He'd been to a number of the bridges and hadn't spotted it because I'd camouflaged the, the box. But anyway, th this, is, um, this is what he looked like. He was a happy camper, and this is what he won. Um, the IHAC Charities badge um, I put on there, and uh, I thought it'd be a nice twist to add a, uh, a Union Jack flag in there because most of these packages were being hid in the, in the US. So... Um, 
uh, clearly I, I don't have a life because this is what the you know that this is what I what I wanted to see and I can't explain why I wanted to see this but I wanted to see it uh, I wanted to see a Google map with where all of the things were hidden uh, who hid them and uh, who found them and what it was they found so I thought well that'll be easy enough um, all of the people that hid stuff followed uh, this dude on Twitter at hiding it. All of the people who uh, found stuff uh, tweeted at I found one uh, when or were supposed to um, tweet at I found one. And Tony was meant to send out a tweet saying found with the hashtag THTH uh, with the location who found it. So I thought that would be a piece of cake. Um, I'll do that in the two hours that my you know my eight month pregnant wife at the time was going to get a you know a haircut. I thought yes I'll do that. Um, so I did what I do now. I don't use Google. I just go straight to Twitter. Um, and uh, I ask people on Twitter, I say, how do I do X, Y, and Z? Um, which is, you know, basically like read the manual. Um, but some people do actually jump in and say, yeah, this is how you do it. So this guy here, Lost Highway, who's, um, who's really helped with a lot of this stuff, he may be here as well. He said, oh, you should play around with Maltigo. Uh, there you go. Um, you can't read that, but it's not important. Go and play around with, with Maltigo. That will do it all you can hack it to make it do what you want. Uh, so I was like, okay, I'll try it. So um, hide a finder, Google map, piece of cake, basically what I was thinking. So let's see who's friends of the, the hiders. And this is where we do this in, uh, in Maltigo. So with Maltigo, I did it this sort of um, half-assed sort of way. Sorry, half-assed sort of way. Um, what you do, you can't really see it here, but to get to like a, a Twitter entity uh, or person, um, I had to go this sort of obscure route, uh, which is where you put the phrase entity. Uh, this is all in the white paper, so I'll move quickly. You put the phrase entity on there. It was at hiding it, so I wanted to see all the tweets that I had at hiding it in it. Um, then uh, then I, I use this transform here to do that. So search Twitter with all those tweets with that, at hiding it in it. Uh, get those tweets out. There they all are, the purple sort of prickly vi uh, virusy sort of things. Uh, and then convert one of those to an actual Twitter user. And uh, voila, um, that's French. Uh, for uh, You get the uh, at hiding it entity. So I was like, yeah, okay, you can do that. There is a quick ways to do that, but... Uh, I explained earlier I'm not lead, um, so I do things the long way. Actually, but not as long as Pat Udor's daughter, who was trying to um, get some uh, images off a website and wasn't quite familiar with the sort of the right-click download image. Um, so she really is lead because she fired up the Fiddler, uh, which is like a web proxy to download those images, which I thought was pretty neat. Um, sorry, that's a, a tangent. Um, but not a dark tangent. Okay, um, friends of this person. So here you can you can do this. This is built into uh, to Multigo. Uh, so I can go around, select this thing. It's called a transform. Basically, what it does is transform an entity into a bunch of other stuff. So you you go ahead and click that, and then you get um, all of the people that are following at uh, at hiding it. Uh, so I picked one. Uh, here I am. Um, you can apply this to all of the entities in the graph, or uh, just one or you know just a bunch that you se select um, and I wanted to see the tweets that this person had written well that I'd written uh, and that's where this kind of thing happened actually that didn't happen I did get some results that's the fail whale on Twitter it means bad things um, it turns out there are a number of limitations with Twitter search um, first of all you're only going to get about two weeks worth of data indexed um, so if you send tweets out before that time you're not going to be able to look at it it doesn't index everybody um, so you're limited so I knew that was a problem because I was expecting like 53 tweets uh, that was before I, I went on Twitter overdrive and now I'm at like 4,500 mainly complete nonsense um, and I only got 12 results, so that, that's weird. So I pinged the guys who wrote Maltigo, Roloff, and, and Andy. I was like, I'm only getting these results. And they must have been thinking, oh, God, I wish you'd go away. Um, and they tried it as well um, because I told them what I was trying to do with the Tony Hawk thing. Um, and they were like, oh, you know, that's weird. Um, we, we're seeing the same thing. I wonder what's going on. So I did some digging around, found about all these Twitter search limitations. And I thought, oh, bollocks. Um, what am I going to do? And this is where... Uh, Roloff said, well, you know, if you can write something um, 
and you can pass it uh, an argument and you can return data in standard output, then you can write what's called a local transform. Um, and Multigo have got these like forums where they've got all these examples on there, and I wrote it in, uh, in Perl. So um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But the concept here, if you want to analyze anything visually and you can call a script, and even I, an Excel jockey, uh, can write a script and pass data back, then you're away. Uh, you could buy this book or you could just look on uh, twitter.com and search for the API stuff that's got a ton of great information there. Um, what you'll find is that you've got three APIs with Twitter. You've got uh, a search one, uh, another one for picking out data from Twitter, and the streaming um, API or the Firehose. Um, the REST API, that one of them search, the reason search is kind of screwed is because it was by another company which Twitter then bought. And this is kind of what the call would look like. So you can't see it, you don't need to, to read it, it's not that important right now. It's, it's in the white paper and on the slides. So these are the gotchas that you get. You've got a 200 tweet limit, so every time you call um, uh, Twitter, that's one API call, you get 200 things back, right? Um, uh, you can't search by date, the max history is about 3,200 tweets, and you've got a limit of 158 API calls an hour. Um, oops. So if you've got 100 people, three, uh, three API calls each, say, because you want to get tweets, like 600 tweets for them, then that's 300, and that's going to blow your API calls for an hour. So if you scale that to like looking at 1,000 people, for example, you're clearly screwed. Um, but this is where whitelisting comes in. So if you're playing around with Twitter and data mining, trying to do anything interesting with it, I'd encourage you to explore the whitelisting. Just Google Twitter whitelisting. Um, you have to apply for it based on like a static IP or a username. And then that bumps up your API calls from 150 an hour to 20,000, which enables you to do all sorts of weird and wonderful, cool things. Um, so OK, back in business. Now I want to find where the winners of the packages were. So I'll pull out Tony Hawk here. Um, and then list all of the people that Tony Hawk had mentioned in his tweets over a period of time, which was roughly sort of 600 tweets, because I figured he'd say somebody, uh, Dave, for example, found skateboard in um, San Francisco. Um, and then I'd be able to look at all of the people who were following it, hiding it in the location of San Francisco. So I did that like that. There are all the people that uh, Tony mentions, potential finders, um, and I repeated that for all of the people that Tony mentioned. Uh, and you do that a couple more times and you start getting a graph that looks a little bit like this. So once you've completed that exercise and done the same thing for the people hiding packages, you end up with one of these. Um, which is um, yeah, which is big. Um, so I thought at this point I saved it, and I thought, well, that's good. But I wonder what happens if I now get all of the people they mentioned in all of their tweets. Um, I know it's going to take a little bit of time, so I'll go for a run. And it was about halfway around a six-mile run, so it's about ten hours in. Um, I thought, shit, all of this stuff's actually going on on some servers in South Africa for some dudes who've given me a license key for 21 days to play around with their tool to write a blog post from a skateboard that they don't even know about. Um, they're fans of him now, by the way. Uh, thanks, Tony. Uh, so I did that, and when I got back, uh, I was greeted with this. Um, so you've got to be a little bit sensible about what you do. They didn't come and get me or anything, because... Uh, well, they haven't done yet. Um, so what you do then, you want to sort of reduce your graph a little bit so you can select all of the people who haven't talked to anybody else or are irrelevant and you get a much cleaner looking graph. Uh, and then you can play with the views of the graph. So here you are, here's like what's called a centrality uh, layout. So you can see um, all of the people that are following, uh, hiding it, all of the people that are following or friends of Tony Hawk. You can see people Tony's mentioned there and you can see people uh, um, following it, hiding it, and you can see the communication between the two of them, so you've already got a bit of a link. They've been talking about something, probably. Hey, I hit that package in San Francisco, you found it, cool job. Um, you can also see that in an organic view where you get nice little pictures of the people that you're looking at uh, like this. So here's me, here's Stephen Gill, Tony, and hiding it, and you can see that we had some communication. Um, 
then you can explore that in an edge-weighted context as well so that you can actually pull out the major players uh, or major conversationalists in an event. So I could like look at this for DEF CON afterwards and see like, who had the most interesting talks and stuff like that. Um, in this, then I found that you had uh, some dude called Jerome Case. Now, I knew that name Jerome Case because he'd sent me the skateboard, uh, but I didn't know he was on Twitter, so that was quite an interesting find. Um, and then looking at this, if you knew nothing about Tony Hawk's Twitter hunt, you'd see that I had something to 